Hey everyone, it's Adam. Time for another What's New in Mix Effect. Today we're going to talk about Mix Effect 1.6.0. The headline feature of this release is support for the new switchers from Blackmagic Design. That's right, at NAB this year, Blackmagic announced three new switchers. The 1ME, 2ME, and 4ME Constellation HD switchers, which you can see in this slide right here. And you actually see them on my desk because I have a loner of the 1ME and 2ME from Blackmagic Design. So thank you very much uh, to them for giving me these switchers. I've been working the past few days furiously to get Mix Effect compatible with these switchers. There's a few other things I found out after the 1.6.0 release. So there's going to be a 1.6.1 release coming out really soon now. They also sent me a HyperDeck Shuttle HD, and I have some little surprises in there for you to show. But let's go back to my presentation and take a look at what we're going to talk about. So we are going to go over the HD support for the Constellation HDs. We're going to talk about the new feature in the Constellation HD, which is the counter overlay. We're going to go over audio improvements, including changes to the equalizer visualizer in, on, in mix effect. We're going to show how you can copy settings across mix effect buses for those switches that have multiple mix effects buses. Uh, new automation actions to control the counter overlay via OSC or shortcuts. Uh, updated switcher settings, um, section of miscellaneous, and some bug fixes, which are going to be coming very soon now. Okay, let's get started. So, H Constellation HD support. Um, as I said before, there's three models the 1ME, 2ME, 4ME. They're all rack mounted. And you can see a uh, little screenshot of Mix Effect right there running and controlling the 2ME Constellation. That again, I have right there. So let's go over some key differences between the Constellation HD and the ATEM Mini lineup. I know a lot of people who are watching this video who use Mix Effect use it with the ATEM Mini, ATEM Mini Pro, Pro ISO, Extreme, or Extreme ISO. And of course, there's other people who are using it with the Production Studio 4Ks and the Constellations. But I think most people are using it with ATEM Mini. So the ATEM Mini lineup is on the, in the center column and constellations on the right-hand column. We see that inputs are HDMI only for the ATEM Mini versus the ATEM constellation uses uh, SDI and it has 10, 20, and 40 inputs. So a huge upgrade in the number of inputs. In terms of outputs, the ATEM Mini, Mini Pro, Mini Pro ISO, they only have one output, HDMI output. I think the ATEM Mini might not even have a HDMI output, just has a webcam output. Um, versus the ATEM Constellation HD has 6, 12, and 24 outputs. So you can assign basically any input to one of those outputs. Um, USB ports, the ATEM Mini has one. The ATEM Mini Extremes, they have two. And the ATEM Constellations, they only have one port. And this is important because the USB port on the ATEM Mini Pro and Pro ISO and Extreme and Extreme ISO can be used for recording. Versus ATEM Constellation HD, you can't use it for recording. It's just used for like a webcam output of the program. SuperSource only exists on the ATEM Mini Extreme and Mini Extreme ISO. In the ATEM Constellation HD, it's only supported on the 2ME and the 4ME. I really wish it would have uh, been added to the 1ME because then it would have been a fantastic uh, upgrade for people who don't need the power of the 2ME and just use it in the 1ME. Um, stingers are not supported across the entire ATEM Mini lineup, but they are supported on the ATEM Constellation lineup. The counter overlay, which I already mentioned, we'll cover that in a little bit, um, supported in Constellation HD, doesn't, isn't supported across any of the other ATEM switchers from Blackmagic. Talkback and Mix Minus are supported in the Constellations. Doesn't exist in ATEM Mini. Uh, it's rack mountable, the ATEM Constellation HD. So if you have a rack, I have one down right there. Uh, I'm going to when I actually get my own Constellation HD for myself, I'm going to put it in a rack. Uh, and the price you can see ranges from $295 for the base level A10 Mini all the way up to $1295 for the A10 Mini Extreme ISO. The A10 uh, Constellation lineup starts at $995 and goes all the way up to $3695 for the A10 uh, 4ME Constellation HD. Now that's quite a mouthful. Now the biggest difference between these are the inputs, so the HDMI and SDI. And if you're going to be migrating from an ATEM Mini to a Constellation HD, you're going to need some converters. Okay, so these converters convert either HDMI to SDI 
or you can buy bi-directional ones that convert HDMI to SDI and SDI to HDMI in the same package. Those are a little bit more expensive, but they're a bit more flexible. So if you have an A10 Mini Extreme that has eight cameras or computers attached to it, in order to get those inputs plugged into the constellation, you're gonna to need to get a bunch of these converters and find a space to put all of them. They're all USB powered, so you're gonna to have to get a big USB kind of adapter that has multiple ports. Now, let's go talk about the counter overlay, which again is a feature only available on the Constellation HD switchers. So it's a countdown or a count up timer, and it displays on output one on the HD switchers. You can adjust the X position and the Y position, the size and the opacity. You can make the counter disappear when the timer is, the countdown timer has elapsed. And there's no font or color adjustability at this point in time. And you can see in the screenshots right here, I have a counter that's in the upper left and then one that's kind of like taking up all the space. So in Mix Effect, you can have a quick little video here. I've ported the Super Source and DVE visualizer over to the counter overlay. So you can actually directly manipulate the counter using your finger. You can use touch to adjust the position, change the size, uh, with pinch and expand. There's convenient presets to set uh, a timer of like one minute, two minutes, three minutes, 15 minutes, all the way up to one hour. And there's an easy to access enable toggle. So you don't have to go in ATEM software control to the outputs menu and choose counter overlay. So let's go do a quick demo of this. I'm gonna bring in my iPad over here and you can see the presentation is still going on and you can see the uh, counter right there. I'm actually going to bring in the counter. There we go right now. So this is a mix effect running uh, attached to the constellation. So I'm going to go to the output tab and you see right here I have capture still, time code, and counter. Another feature in mix effect is I actually remove the streaming and recording from the switcher's output section if your switcher doesn't support uh, streaming and recording, which the constellations do not. So we see the counter here. It's set to two minutes and I can just push the start and you can see uh, the counter starting, counting down from two minutes and then I can stop it. I can reset it. I can turn it into a count up and just say start. And now it's counting up from two minutes. I'm gonna switch it back to a countdown timer. I'm gonna stop it. I'm gonna reset it. I'm gonna use these presets here to set it to be five minutes and I'm gonna start it. And now I'm going to, you can also change with your finger just the position X and Y like this using these sliders. You can change the opacity as well. And you can see it reflecting in the uh, video box on the right. Now what's cool about Mix Effect is that you can just unlock this just like you can unlock the super source of the DVE visualizer. And you can just use your finger to drag it around. So I'll use the trackpad on the thing so you can see where the virtual finger is. I'm going to expand it. It can only go to 100% uh, and I can make it go really small. You can't change the opacity with your finger, so you just have to use a slider here like that. Bring that up. Pretty cool, huh? So it's very easy to kind of adjust your uh, counter overlay to be exactly where you want it to, to go. And the other great thing is that we have the ability to automate the counter overlay. So you can see here, I'm gonna go back to the presentation. You can take a look at this kind of animated GIF that I have here. You could automate and animate the counter overlay, uh, changing its position, size, and opacity using shortcuts and OSC. So to give a quick demo of that, I will show it like this. Let's go to this guy here, okay? And then I'm just gonna directly manipulate this again so you can see it moving here. But I also have some buttons here that I can just push on my stream deck and it's animating that counter. I'll push this button to go to full. So you can see how you might have the counter kind of like fade in, fade out, or maybe like shoot across the screen uh, before your show begins or when there's a particular countdown that's happening during your presentation. I'm gonna make it go down there. So I'm gonna just toggle that off and then come back to the presentation. Audio improvements. So in Mix Effect 1.5, I made a lot of improvements to the audio section for Fairlight audio uh, equipped switchers, which includes the ATEM Mini lineup and the ATEM Constellation HDs. So the audio meters are now much more accurate. 
uh, the audio meters decay over time visually. Um, and actually, let's go take a look at the iPad here. And I'll bring in the audio section for my A10 Mini Extreme, which I'm using right now. And we'll take a look what that looks like. So the audio meters decay over time. If I'm just quiet, you see it does that decay. Um, there's peak meters that are a lot more accurate than before. The audio meters themselves are much more accurate. Uh, you can also sort audio by type now. So right now you see I have mic one, mic two. So those are the microphones followed by the inputs. So if you want, you can change that by going to user interface, sort audio sources, and then you can say edit sort order of audio sources. So if you wanted your uh, microphones to be on top all the time, you just drag it like that. If you want your inputs to be on top all the time, you can just drag it like this, okay? Like that. And you can also order audio sources by state. So if you have uh, microphones or audio inputs that are on, those will always go on top and the ones that are off will go on the bottom. So for instance, if I turn mic two on, and I turn mic one off, you'll see that mic one gets sorted below mic two. So this is a great new feature for people who want uh, the exact microphone or audio type in a certain position especially those switchers that have a lot more audio inputs than just microphone and uh, camera inputs or HDMI inputs. There's also a new feature here to reduce the size of the um, audio panels so you can fit more on the screen. So if you have an A10 Mini Extreme, you have, let's say, what, like 10, 10 or 11 uh, audio inputs, you can have them all visible on screen by just kind of condensing this. You do lose access to like the uh, video follows audio and some of the kind of settings there but I think that's okay. Equalization curves. So in Mix Effect 1.5, I added equalization curves to the app. And now in Mix Effect um, 1.6.0, I've added direct manipulation of those curves. So let's take a look. I'm not gonna modify one microphone that's actually on right now. So I'm gonna modify this one. So you can actually use your finger now to modify these curves. So I'm just like clicking and moving this around. Move it up, I'll use my finger here, like that, like that, like that. And you can also long press to change the type. So if I wanna turn this from the bell shape to the low shell shape, I'll do that. And you can also double tap um, bells shapes. Okay, double tap sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't work. I need to figure out what's happening there um, to modify the Q factor. So let's see if that works. It's not working right now, but if you want, you can double tap the button will turn purple and then you can use that, use touch to just adjust the, the Q factor. So this is a great way, not only to visualize your equalizer, but also to modify it in real time, right from the iPad. One of the long standing features that I wanted to add, uh, I finally figured out the math. So thank you to everyone who helped me with that. All right, back to the presentation. So the next feature is copying mix effect bus settings. So if you have a switcher with multiple mix effects buses, such as the ATEM 2ME Constellation HD, the 4ME Constellation HD, the 2ME Production Studio 4K, the 4ME Broadcast Studio 4K, or Constellation 8K, you have two to four mix effects buses. And so if we take a look at the iPad, I'm gonna connect, this is the uh, ATEM Mini Extreme, and it only has one mix effects bus, okay? But if I connect to the ATEM 2ME, you'll see I have two right up at the top right there. So I can switch between the two and you see uh, ME2 right now is set to, let's just set it to camera 10 and put this preview and make it a wipe transition like this. But let's say you're working in ME1 and you wanna copy the settings from ME1 over to ME2. And settings, uh, I mean by what's on program, what's on preview, the state of the keyers and the transition styles and the status of the fade to black control. You can now do that from mix effect. So all you have to do is click on this little uh, icon right here and it'll bring up a sheet and you basically say, I wanna copy from ME1 or ME2 and I wanna copy it to ME2. Um, if you have ME3, ME4, you can select those, you can select all and you can choose what settings you want here. So again, let me, before I actually apply that, I'm gonna show you what ME1 looks like. So we got five red uh, previews, camera one, it's a mix and nothing's on the keyers right now. And for ME2, we have, Camera 10, camera seven on preview, and I'll turn all these guys on 
to just to see what happens. Okay. Yeah, I'll turn on, I'll keep it on wipe. And now I'm going to copy settings from ME1 all the way over to ME2. I'm going to click copy. And now you see ME2 looks identical uh, in setting configuration to ME1. So I think this will be really convenient if you use multiple MixFX buses and you just want to copy all your settings from one to one of the other two, three, or four uh, buses that you have. All right. So next up, automation. As I said before, you could automate the counter overlay. So I've added new shortcut supports to let you do just that. You can use the set counter overlay action to set all the settings. You can use the run counter lay, uh, overlay action to uh, start the counter, um, stop the counter, or reset the counter. There's also a dedicated reset counter overlay option. And then there's a get counter lay that gives you all the details for the counter lay. Um, I've also had some improvements to the set multi-view layout action if you have an ATEM for me broadcast studio. And I added a new switcher page layout in the previous version of MixEffect, which allows you to actually create new switcher pages sections uh, in a switcher in MixEffect. If you are want to like kind of programmatically configure a new switcher, which is a bunch of page pages, you can do that right now. For OSC, there's a lot of OSC support for the counter overlay. So, and you can see a full list there. Um, in MixEffect 1.6.1, I'm adding a new one, which is the counter position size opacity control. Uh, and that will be coming out soon. Companion, let me give you an update on that. So the companion module has been updated to support selected MixEffect buses. Um, there was a bug in the previous version where you couldn't select more than MixEffect bus number one. But now that's fixed. So if you have one with a switcher with multiple mix of X buses, you can now uh, select one, two, three, or four. You can download the latest beta from the BitFocus website. And I believe that uh, the BitFocus team is going to be releasing this into Companion Core, um, the non-beta one, um, soon by the end of the month. Uh, finally, let me give you an update on feedback. So there's a, a new change in the Send Companion Feedback action, which supports common delimited list of feedback sections. However, the current mix effect module does not support feedback. Uh, I've been, haven't actually been in touch with the developer, so he's been under the weather recently. So I am actually looking for someone else to help me continue development of the module. Uh, and so that's why the module has been delayed and I'm looking for some help to kind of get that ball rolling again so we can actually bring proper feedback to the mix effect companion module. So if you know how to develop companion, Plugins, please contact me and we'll get started. Switcher sections or switcher settings. There's a lot of S's there. Let's take a look at that um, over here on the iPad. So we now have the ability to actually set the video mode. So on supported switchers, sometimes you can set the multi-view video mode, which is different from the video mode of the switcher itself. Uh, and some switchers also show a 3G SGI output or a down convert video mode kind of setting. So those options will appear if your switcher supports them. So this is all kind of bringing feature parity from ATEM software control, the desktop, PC, or Mac application from Blackmagic over to MixEffect. Uh, the audio section has a lot more settings. So there's more analog input settings. Um, you can set the kind of the analog input level um, for like TRS or the microphones. And we've also added mix minus and talkback support. So the new Constellation HDs have mix minus and talkback. So you can configure all those things from MixEffect itself. You don't have to go to ATEM software control. Some miscellaneous uh, settings. I've added RS422 remote settings. So for supported switchers, you can configure those three things. Disable PTZ control via Visca and external control via GVG100. I have no idea what those things are. But uh, if you make use of them, you can now configure them from within MixEffect. I also reorganize the sections within the switcher settings because there's a lot more things I've been adding. So it just makes them a little bit more easy to follow. Okay, miscellaneous things. Uh, I have an ad I've added an option to disable the navigation sidebar. And it's hiding in settings advanced. Um, and there's also a way to highlight the last macro run. And I misspelled the word highlight there. Highlight. Uh, which you can find in settings macro. So let me show you what those do. I'm going to switch over to the iPad here. And I'm going to connect to my ATEM Mini Extreme. 
and we'll go to settings here. So the navigation sidebar is this thing right here. So what you can do now, if you don't like that, you can go to the advanced settings and say disable sidebar. And then the macro highlight, I'm gonna just have this indicator on, off by default, click done. And now you see there's no sidebar, you know, it's just the navigation section. So I'm gonna tap on switcher and you see it's like in full screen. So if you don't like the sidebar, you can have it like permanently gone. Uh, and I'm gonna run this, uh, let's see, I'm gonna run this macro right here. If we turn my multi view into the Mac mini output, you won't see any difference, like there. Um, and then I'm gonna go back to this. You'll see right now that that macro that I pushed number four has a little check mark next to it. So that shows you that this was the last macro that you ran. There's a feature request um, that came in from a customer that said, we, wanna, we, use, we use like three macros and we wanna know which macro we last ran because that uh, represents the state that the ATEM is in. So this is a, a quick way for you to identify that. Um, so those are two kind of miscellaneous features that I've added. I'm gonna bring back that sidebar because I personally like it. Under advanced settings, sidebar, turn that off. And now I have the sidebar back again. All right, the HyperDeck Shuttle HD. This is a new product from Blackmagic Design, costs $495. Basically a, a mini version of a HyperDeck, which has a gigantic jog wheel that you can use for fast forwarding, uh, going through clips and being, and used as a teleprompter. So uh, it has like HDMI outputs and inputs, an ethernet port, um, the display, there's no display as you can see from the screenshot here. The display kind of gets overlaid on the, output. So if you want to change the settings, you have to push these really hard to push button menus and set buttons and then use the jog wheel to kind of control stuff. It's, um, I don't know if I would use it, but uh, I think a lot of people are buying it because they want to use kind of the teleprompter feature. But one funny thing about this is that the uh, teleprompter, you it's hard to change the setting. Again, you have to push this kind of hard to push menu button. You have to use the scroll wheel to go to the um, video format and change it from you know a video format for playback to teleprompter mode. So I will show you what I've done here. Let's go over here and go to HyperDex. And I don't think I have one configured for this, but I'm gonna go connect to the ATEM constellation and there's my HyperDeck. And I'm gonna see if I have some shortcuts enabled right here. I'm gonna type in HyperDeck. Okay, and I've created a, um, a shortcut that lets you switch between file formats. So this is my HyperDex connected to IP address 10.0.1.166. I'm gonna push this and it's gonna say, what format do you wanna switch to? Because the HyperDeck plays back files in a particular format. You can't mix and match things. You have to set the HyperDeX to play back files from H.264 high, and that's all the clips that will look through all the clips and find the ones that are in that format and then show them to you. So I'm gonna just tap that. And you see now the HyperDeck here reloads in Effect to show those clips, okay? And if I wanna switch it to teleprompter mode, I would just tap this, again, run the shortcut and say switch to teleprompter mode. And there you see it's now in teleprompter mode. And I'm actually gonna to switch to teleprompter mode. So you see there's a teleprompter right there. And I'm gonna switch this back to the H.264. And you can see it's gonna pull up the last video that I had up, which, has me frozen in time <laughs> like that. So I'm gonna switch back to teleprompter mode like this. This is a lot easier, let me tell you, than pushing menu, scrolling through the jog wheel, and pushing set. Uh, so now I'm gonna go actually play this. Let's see if this works. And now it's playing right there. I can actually switch to the little jog wheel and then I can like fast forward like this, just with my hand. A little easier to use the jog wheel in this case. Uh, and I can also do this to kind of like to play it at a certain speed. You know, this is at two speed, four speed, eight speed. I'm gonna go backwards also like this. Okay, just using my finger over here. Or you can just press play. Okay, and I'll go back there. So that's uh, some shortcuts that I've added for uh, the teleprompter mode, switching file formats. There's also a shortcut for refreshing the teleprompter. Now, this is a little buggy here. Uh, I think people are trying to see whether or not you can uh, upload 
files to the FTP server that's built into HyperDeck, like edit a file that's already being in use and kind of like refresh it. What I found, it actually kind of crashes the eight, the HyperDeck and you have to restart it. So that's not good. Uh, but I'm sure hopefully Blackmagic will release an update that will like detect when files are changes, changed and then update the teleprompter uh, text so that you don't have to, you know, restart the HyperDeck <laughs> every time you make a change to a file. Not good. All right, MixEffect 1.6.1. I just released MixEffect 1.6.0 today, but I already found some bugs. Um, there was actually an update to the switchers also that came today. I was wondering if they made some changes that kind of overrid kind of the implementation that I did in MixEffect 1.6.0. So some bug fixes that are coming out. Uh, the counter overlay clock will update more accurately in 1.6.1. And I've also added that position adjust and set, uh, position size and opacity action. And then there's a bug in the OSC action for position uh, position adjust and position set. It wasn't setting the proper values for the position. So that's been fixed in 161, and I hope to bring that out very soon. All right. So those are all the new features, improvements, and bug fixes in MixEffect 1.6.0. If you are a big user of Fairlight Audio, you will love the new changes in the audio section. And if you have a Constellation HD, you will definitely want to upgrade to MixEffect 1.6.0 because Mixfect won't work until you upgrade to the newest version. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if you like what you've seen, please remember to subscribe down below and like this video. And if you haven't done so already, please rate Mixfect on the App Store. I really appreciate all the great comments and reviews that you've been leaving me. Thank you, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.